Here we are again, back on board, and Happy New Year to the uh, to the listeners and non-listeners alike, and people who are definitely not being entertained on these test transmissions on 160 meters, two meters, streaming online as well, and that can be found by via my QRZ page. This is VK3SL. And we start the year with, um, well, we've got a bit of a formula, I suppose, we've established over the pit, over the last little while. So we'll continue with that and we'll slowly, um, oh, I've got a few ideas this year about how we might, um, how I might exploit the, uh, the shelves here a little bit more. Anyhow, more about that later on. And um, anyhow, it's good to be back on board. I've been away and I've been out and about for, gosh, better part of three weeks I suppose excuse me since I've been on and um, yeah it's sort of it's funny coming back into this room again after a very long break and seeing uh, that there's a even a uh, ivy starting to grow into the room it's found a crack in the wall and there's this long wire it wasn't a microphone cable it wasn't a patch lead it was actually a uh, a plant wire which has wound itself away on something so yes we're gradually being taken over by nature yeah Right, so what's first? Oh, yeah, there's a great, um, some wonderful offerings from Prozut, and uh, I think we'll use uh, one of his to start the get the ball rolling today. And it's a, uh, a recording with Baba Marley and uh, with Duke Ellington's orchestra back in 1927. Of course, Baba Marley was very much the founder of that jungle sound, that uh, wonderful growly speech-like inflection. And Joe Nanton also on the trombone uh, uh, pioneered the same technique, but it makes the music have a fantastic raw energy. So we'll have a listen. Duke Ellington and his orchestra, 1927, uh, with uh, Blue Bubbles. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, the raw energy of uh, uh, good old Duke Ellington and his orchestra, and we heard the driving rhythm of uh, Sonny Greer and Fred, Fred Guy there, the uh, string bass driving things, and great drumming as well, and of course solos with uh, Tricky Sam Nanton, and Johnny Hodges, and Harry Carney, and of course Bubba Miley with his inimitable growl trumpet back in 1927, and uh, Duke Ellington. Okay, uh, acknowledging Mr. L, who just uh, sent an email. So, hi, Chris. Uh, We'll catch up with you. Yes, I'll try and make some time. I'd like to uh, oblige that invitation. So we'll see how that goes. I'll uh, get in touch. Just got back today. It's all a bit frantic, but, uh, you know, it's the way it works. It's all done on the, uh, not only the smell of an oily rag, but we, we have to be spontaneous with these missions. Otherwise, they are terminally boring. All right, we move on. And, uh, yeah, more prosuit, I think. Yes, I've got a couple of records on the turntable, which I will try in a minute, but uh, my initial tests <laughs> a few minutes ago <laughs> sounded like there was a fair bit of RF, uh, stray RF, so uh, we'll see if uh, if that remains a problem. But in the meantime, we'll have a listen to uh, Anson, well, Anson Weeks, I should say, and his orchestra back in 1931 with Crazy Rhythm again. Uh, care of Mr. Prosuit, this is VK3SL. That was Anson Weeks and his orchestra. Oh, and they're keeping on going. Fellas, you can back off, please. Thank you. Yes, there's actually a really good recording of I've Got Rhythm there as well. But we'll, we'll save that for another time. And I'll fade them out. And we'll have a uh, we'll have a selection direct off the turns. We'll see if this works. This is one of those funny uh, Bon Marsh records. Um, I think it's probably a pseudonym or maybe not be. But it says John Porter and his... Um, and his Harmony Troupe, pretty hot band, and um, not so certain about the provenance of this, but uh, we'll give it a burl and, um, yeah, see if the turntables are still working after a break of nearly a month. So what do I do? I activate this fader here, and, oh, okay, whoa, I can hear the RF coming in there. Look, I'll just back off a little bit, and we will we'll see how we go. I'll let the ident tell you who I am. On. Thank you. 
This is VK3SL testing on 160 meters, 2 meters, and the Broadway streaming service. Okay, I hope that worked all right. Um, yeah, I have to be a bit judicious with the faders. With the um, if a, uh, if if I'm a too advanced with the fader, we get a few bit of RF in the system. It seems to be the way of things here. Maybe the antenna needs a retune. I didn't do that. Anyhow, we heard. Uh, well, we we heard John Porter at his Harmony Trip, which I think is a lens and his orchestra. I'll need to find out more about them. They're on a funny one of those purple Bon Marsh records from the uh, late 20s, probably 27, 28, judging by the style of that disc, but pretty hot and pretty tight performance, so it warrants a bit of further investigation, I think. There's a few of them here. So I think, uh, yes, Brian, Brian Rust says Al Lenz and his orchestra. So... Um, We'll, uh, we'll leave it at that for the moment. On the other turntable, I have um, Henry Archer and his orchestra on one of those wonderfully euphorically distorted light, <laughs> light beam records. The, um, the, the sound is, uh, of course, has this wonderful intermod effect of uh, making a small ensemble sound like a very large ensemble. And, of course, the presence and the immediacy and the punch is uh, is all there so we we have this uh, mega distorted sound but in some funny way it sort of adds to the uh, mu adds to the music particularly with the small ensembles it sounds absolutely dreadful with an orchestra but uh, yeah we'll have a listen to Sonny and this is with Henry Archer this is VK3 SL test transmission <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, that whoa, <laughs> that was uh, Harry Archer and his orchestra on a uh, mid twenties Brunswick. One of those records where you cannot read the label; you have to hold it up to the light on the angle to see what it says because um, the gold leaf has worn off. But uh, yes, that euphoric light beam recording. I was reading about them here. What do they say? It says um, the light ray recording process was a variation of the. Palophotophone, that's the recorder of dancing light, and that was developed by Dr. Charles Hosey, or Hoxie, of the GE Labs. And it says the device was a photoacoustic audio recorder whose medium was 35mm film and a precursor to RCA's photophone. It used a recording horn, not a microphone. Instead of being attached to a cutting stylus, the diaphragm at the narrow end was connected to a mirror, and the mirror reflected light from a bulb of constant brightness. And when the mirror undulated, a variable area of oscilloscopic, wow, oscilloscopic image was exposed on the film. Once developed, the film was played back, positioned between a constant source of light and a photocell. And the photocell drove an electric electronic amplifier. So that's how it's described here. Whether or not that's exactly the process used by Brunswick, I don't know, but it certainly has a it shares similarities to those wonderful uh, Warner Brothers films of the uh, early 30s, which also had that uh, very highly compressed and distorted sound. And um, I think of 42nd Street and uh, Dames and and the like. But um, in that process in its infancy was uh, adopted by uh, uh, by. Brunswick for commercial reasons. Yes, they wanted to uh, uphold their own process um, and not compete with uh, with Western Electric, I suppose. Um, now, let's see what's next on the list. I'm looking at the PC now, and what do we have? Oh, yes, we have to have a Bix offering. There's been more great uh, Bix transfers from Prozut and I think we'll hear now um, Crying All Day, this is with Frankie Trambaugh's orchestra, it has a Bix solo to die for, it is so wonderful, I've listened to this a few times in recent weeks and um, and in the car and whatnot, and it is just a um, amazing solo so you have to have to indulge I'm afraid um, now, what am I doing? I'm talking as I see multitask. What happens? I lose the ability to multitask, and I think I've got the right fader up. We've got Mr. Prozoot up on the screen, and Bix looking at me, looking into the ether. Poor old Bix uh, on the screen, and yes, I think it's crying all days. The track and listen for the Bix solo. He does everything is just wonderful. The way he plays around with the rhythm, and uh, it's harmonically adventurous. It's full of spatial effects it's um, it's great um, use of um, extended harmonies yeah all right enough waffling from me vk3 sl testing of course <laughs>
Now, how is that playing around the lead? <laughs> Fantastic playing by Mr. B. Feature a lot of Mr. B on these test transmissions because his um, bell-like tone is very good for testing transmitters and uh, musically there's something good happening as well. Very good. All right, so what we'll do now is just usher ourselves into a different zone. Here we go. See, this is preemptive. From next week, we are moving into a partly Japanese household. Yes, we're having a Japanese exchange student coming to stay with us. And uh, so I thought, well, she hasn't arrived yet, but we're making big plans. It's going to be a busy week because we have to reconfigure everything. In fact, we have to move out uh, everything out of one of the rooms. We have to make an extra bedroom in the house. And it means I actually lose one of my studios, which is a bit of a shame. But never mind. Well, we're going to reinstate one under the house. And that's one for the kids to use. And, um, yes, um, we might even be putting a ladder through the floor. So there could be a few big changes. And uh, this is anticipating, yes, a new member of the household. So quite exciting, really. And uh, so, in preparation, well, not that anybody associated with that will be listening to this, but for my own, uh, a topic close to my uh, to, to my mind at the moment, I will riff on this a little bit. We'll just fade out the vapours now. We've had enough of turning Japanese. And we'll listen to a rare Japanese recording made in 1925. In fact, it says here it's the first jazz recording. I wonder. I found this online. It's on a, um, a Japanese Columbia Nitto Records. And it says here the Nitto Jazz Band. And the name of the song is Walla Walla. Now, it's a little bit of a catchy tune, very primitively recorded. And uh, recorded in 1925, I think it's acoustic, but... Um, if it's electric, it's pretty bad. So I ask for your indulgence with this, but it is something quirky and representative of uh, a bit of a Japanese theme, which will uh, will will develop in the next ten minutes. VK3 SL. <laughs> Okay, what do you think of that? <laughs> that was Walla Walla, the Nitto jazz band, and uh, on a, um, yeah. a, 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 um, a recording made in Osaka in 1925. 
no other information. There is a fair bit of Japanese on the label, and I um, showed that to our Japanese correspondent resident here, and I had it all authenticated that it actually does fit the bill with the English translation. And uh, But look, no other information other than it was recorded in Osaka. And Osaka back in 1925 would have been pretty much like a third world country. <laughs> but it's, it's you know, that's jazz. They, they go to town. They're taking, they're wearing their you know, hearts on their sleeves and they're playing to their heart's content and they're, um, there's a fantastic energy in that playing. So, yes, they're emulating the jazz styles of, um, of the West very effectively. And I wonder what the course of influence was. It's uh, pretty fascinating stuff. So something more reflective now. Um, I've got a couple. I've got one on the turntable. Which shall I play first? Um, yeah, I'll play this one um, on the turntable. So what do I do? I move that into position. And um, yeah, this is uh, Lee Lash and the Orchestra of 1937. And it's a recording called Sayonara. We all know what that means. And um, oh, look, have a listen. It's interesting. It's sort of, um, here's our representative piece in a minor key. It's got that sort of uh, low down, rather, I don't know, slightly um, reflective, slightly introspective ambience. Anyhow, I'll let you decide what you think about it. And I will hopscotch over to the turntable VK. Oh, I'll let this speak for itself. VK3SL testing with Lee Lash and his orchestra.
a uh, very chilled out recording of Lee Lash and his orchestra recorded I think in Tokyo in 1937 um, don't know much about that it's on a Japanese Victor um, I got for my 10th birthday yes it came with a white microphone a um, HMV model 101 which I got for my 10th birthday and I had a few records with it including that disc so I think I've played the other side in a previous missions but um, anyhow Lee Lash, and uh, yeah, it's pretty. I like that sort of. I love. I would love to have seen it recorded. I would have. Uh, I can imagine the uh, that setting in uh, in Japan at that time would have had a real uh, taint of exoticism about it. Um, anyhow, in similar vein, we're going to hear Cosmos Elegy. Now, this is also quite sort of reflective, minor key, slightly sad, and. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting, and uh, what does it say about this here? Um, yeah, again, it's all in Japanese, so I have to have it all verified. Uh, but it, yeah, it's it's got that sort of mysterious feeling about it, I suppose. So we don't know about the artist. I don't think it even tells tells us who's playing on this. I will no nope, no other information. So have a listen, and we'll hear Cosmos Elegy. Same period. Okay, that was uh, Cosmos Elegy and um, very alluring performance. Um, fascinating. Um, I don't know anything about the artist at all, but uh, she had something quite uh, mysterious and captivating about her inflection and it had that sort of folksy feel that um, takes you somewhere else. I'm going to have a little a listen to a bit of it again. Sorry about that, folks. I like this piece and it takes me somewhere. See, uh, yeah, and uh, interesting use of the pentatonic scale. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, yeah, that was um, Cosmic Elegy. I suppose Elegy is traditionally a piece about grief. I'd love to know what she's singing about. I played some of it to um, to Henry, or our Japanese correspondent earlier, and he did have a good listen to it, and he was able to make out a few words, but um, I might need extra verification from our our guest-to-be. To She'll be arriving in the next few days, so we'll... Um, uh, next next week, actually. So we'll find out. That'll be one of the things. I'll uh, uh, I'll get her to comment on that recording. Cosmos Elegy. Okay. All right. So let's see. Uh, bring the microphone over. And um, had a bit of a one evening a few weeks ago when I were on the farm. I was having a listening to recordings of that great Bob Dylan song, Times They Are a Change. And I sort of had a... I like riffing on a song sometimes, listening to lots of different versions, heaps of them out there, and um, all from the 60s. In fact, uh, shortly after he wrote the song, about uh, 10 different people recorded it. But the song I like, the recording I like best by far, is the one that the Australian group, The Seekers, made. And uh, so I thought I'd put that on. And uh, great words, and uh, interesting sort of uh, 60s anthem, I suppose. You could say. So let's have a listen to The Times, They Are Changing. And there we hear the Seekers, and this is BK3SL. What's that? Uh, uh, that? Oh, I can tell you all about that. Uh, there's a little bit of a um, preamble to this, and I'm going to just move it well, forward a exactly bit, well, because it's a part of a film. So here we go. Come gather round people wherever you roam And admit that the waters around you have grown And accept it that soon you'll be drenched to the bone If your time to you is worth saving Then you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone For the times they are a change Come writers and critics, who prophesy with your pen And keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again And don't speak too soon, for the wheel's still in spin And there's no telling who that it's naming For the loser now will be later to win For the times, they are a change Senators, congressmen, please heed the call. Don't stand in the doorway, don't block up the hall. For he that gets hurt will be he who has stalled. There's a battle outside and it's raging. It'll soon shake your windows and rattle your walls. For the times, they are a change. Throughout the land And don't criticize What you can't understand Your sons and your daughters Are beyond your command Your old road Is rapidly aging Please get out Of the new one If you can lend your hand For the times They are a-changing The line it is drawn The curse it is cast the slow one now will later be fast As the present now will later be past The order is rapidly fading And the first one now will later be last For the times they are a change That's the quintessential protest song from the 60s with the be uh, with the Seekers. Yay. And there's another really good uh, version of it with Peter, Paul and Mary as well. And Simon Garfunkel did it. Look, there's so many. The Bob Dylan version, of course, is the the original. Um, but, yeah, I particularly like that one. They sing so well in tune. And I think the secret is is um, Judith Durham. Her voice is um, right in the centre of the harmony there. She's not actually singing the lead in that recording, but um, being in the middle and singing, she's got such a true sense of pitch that it reigns the others in, and they have this cohesion, this amazing cohesion. 
I love the Seekers. Okay, another thing. This week, Jimmy Hannon passed away. So I heard that news, and uh, not that I've ever been a great uh, advocate for for a commercial radio, but as a nostalgia exercise, I, I find the tradition interesting. And he was a luminary, of course, and he had one big hit uh, with the uh, was with the Bee Gees, that's right, in 1963. So I thought I'd give that a bit of a bash since that um, he passed away a few days ago. So let's hear Jimmy Hannon with Beach Ball, and I'm VK3SL testing, of course. We're gonna keep it swinging until next fall. Oh, we're having a beach ball. Everybody's feeling fun. Oh, we're gonna have a beach party. Can you find a better way to spend the summertime? Clap your hands, keep a dance to the beach band. Splashing in the water, dancing in the sand. Take your baby and make it to the party. Everybody's doing it all over this land. Oh, we're having a beach ball. Everybody's feeling fun. We're gonna have a beach party. Can you find a better way to spend the summertime? Clap your hands, keep a dance to the beach band. Splashing in the water, dancing in the sand. Take your baby and make it to the party. Everybody's doing it all over this land. Oh, we're having a beach party. Everybody's feeling fine. Oh, we're gonna have a beach party. Can you find a better way to spend the summertime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he did it, yes, <laughs> Jimmy Haddon, Beach Ball from 1963, and uh, yeah, acknowledging the um, his presence in our, our media sphere, Mr. Haddon. And look, I actually have something else lined up of his, I think we'll make it our um, OTR segment, and uh, found a tape of 3UZ in 1960, no, 1973, and it features Mr. H, and... Um, Somebody else, I can't think who. Um, anyhow, I'll have a listen to this. I've edited out the, um, I did a quick get dub and edited out the uh, the songs. So we'll just get a bit of a, a window into 3UZ, as it was in 1963. So sit back, goes for about 15 minutes, and uh, we'll hear some radio nostalgia, 70s style. This is VK3SL, testing, of course. <laughs> It's 10 o'clock. This is Neil Watson for 3UZ BBN Network News. It would help if I actually <laughs> put this back to the start of the track. So what we'll do, we'll spool back, super fast spooling here, and we will try that again. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> It's 9.30. This is John Sheed for 3UZBBN Network News. It's been recommended that municipal council and shire should be formed into regional groupings so they can approach the federal government for financial assistance. The recommendation comes in a report from the Department of Urban and Regional Development and urges that there should be 68 groupings of local government bodies throughout Australia, including 18 in Victoria. Nine of the groupings would be in the Melbourne metropolitan area. It seems the federal government has been slowly backing down from its strong stand on aid for private schools, with the number to lose all aid cut by half. Education Minister Beasley says that only 50 schools will completely lose the grants, compared with the original list of 105. 
137 private schools have won appeals against their classification. It's 9.32 and a half. Melbourne will be very warm with increasing cloud and some rain later with possible thunderstorms. On the bays, mainly east to northeast winds averaging 5 to 10 knots with smooth to slight seas. The expected maximum today, 29. Currently, it's 24. This is John Sheed for 3 UZ VBN Network News. Hello again, oh, all you lovely ladies. Now, once again, I'm going to talk to you about the tone of fresh fruit in a can. It's absolutely freaky fruit. Dessert things of pies and all that wonderful sort of eating stuff, they can all be made with amazing a tone of fresh fruit in a can. Especially the peaches. Oh, I love them. Peach flan. Oh, go mad. Go up in the morning, I look out the window and I'll say, I'm going to have my breakfast. And I'll think, the toner, fresh peaches in a can. That's what I'm going to have. Oh, all right. Safeway discount bring the prices down again. This time it's vegetables. Safeway buyers stormed the markets and bought field fresh Victorian cauliflowers picked at their prime for 20 cents. You heard right. 20 cents for choice cauliflowers at all Safeway discount supermarkets now. And a money back guarantee, if you don't mind. Safeway. This is Jimmy Hannon. John Bruce Discounts have beautiful furniture at beautiful discount prices. Furnish your home now on terms of the lowest discount price. Your payments are free if you're sick, injured or unemployed. So let John Bruce do the worrying. John Bruce Discounts, 216 High Street, St Kilda. We're going John Bruce. Hey, the big rage and the in thing, I believe, Jack, is those marble top tables. I've got three of those. From John Bruce's? Yes. Well, I don't like them. Why? It's like boozing in a graveyard. Have you ever had four of them in the house? Or it's in a graveyard? Oh, yeah. boozing on a graveyard. Get yeah, out. John Newman's Wendy and Karen. They come from Warrion by a Colac. Then they'd like a request from Mum and Dad, who are very much in love. Oh. oh what do you know love about love? Wonder. Don't knock it. Who doesn't know about love? You. You don't know I know about, about more love than, love than you do. What do you... You I drove a London taxi for five years, son. That's nothing. Round the block love. twice for $20. Yeah. And here's an extra dollar if you don't look in the mirror and oh. all that. I know That's not love. love, that's procuring. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wasn't me, Mr. Moright. The two of us, there'll always be for you and me the world. And we'll be all. and dad at Warrior by Cola. Good on you, mum and dad. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, don't, 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 don't do that, Jim. It, it tortures. Oh, yeah. It pounds into my brain. It's What's like the time? Pressure. Well, I know. Do you know? No. <laughs> tell I'll it. tell you. We won't keep it a secret. We won't hold it among ourselves. It's 22 minutes to 10 o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's and nice. I do like the floor plan, but I'd really like an ensuite. Uh, that's fine, honey, but this package home doesn't have one. And I still say the house would look nicer with a Spanish-style front. But, sweet, this package home doesn't have a Spanish-style front. Oh, all right. Look, Evidently, they are not talking about a Stockhold home. Remember that name. Only Stockhold homes give you over 6,750 choices. Because now, Stockhold have the largest range of package home designs and variations in Melbourne. See our advertisement in Saturday's Sun Property Guide for display location details. Stockhold Homes for Prestige Planned House and Land, a division of Stocks and Holdings Limited. The matchless food bargains at SSW supermarkets are not one-day wonders. This week's advertising saving is $1.99 against the discount store prices. Shop today, tomorrow, even early next week. You'll still reap unbeatable savings at SSW supermarkets. Still the cheapest, day in, day out. When you've just sunk a 12-foot putt of the 18th and the 19th hole is only a chip away, think about a Vickers. Vickers Gin. Try it mixed long, cool and thirst quenching, or brief and bracing. Sets you up after a hard played game. Vickers Gin, crystal clear, clean and invigorating. Remember, the label's blue, but the effect is devastating. <laughs> 
Oh, look, we've got a request here for Deborah Brunston of Kiton. Oh, Brunston of Kiton. Oh, well, hello. How old is she? That's Norma and Ron. Yes, indeed. What is it? Norma's birthday on Saturday. Hello, Norma. How are you? She's marvellous. Norma and Ron, they're Isn't my good lovely? friends at Kiton. Well, they uh, ran the uh, Daffodil Queen con uh, contest, and I was oh, up one. there, and I made all well, the Daffodil Queen one. Boy, I, I can't remember now. It's like two months. Did ago. you have a good time? Well, but you're I had a yourself. wonderful time. You're only young once, and I yeah. had a terrific time. They say you're only young once, and everybody nods their head wisely and yeah. say, yeah. "Yeah." So how many times you're middle aged? You're only middle aged once, aren't you? Yeah, you're only old once, yeah, aren't you? Well, what are you talking about? And say goodbye. goodbye. Put him in. Dig another <laughs> grave. They do. <laughs> no, hello. Dad Dad's birthday on Tuesday, is it? Well, I wish you, Ron Brunson, a very, very happy birthday. Norma, lots of love to you from the family there, and your family in particular, and my family. Wish you a very, very happy day to you and to Ron. And Wally Harvey and uh, his wife, uh, Lily. Lily Harvey is having a birthday today. They're from Warburton. So happy birthday to you, Lily. You've got and some happy great birthday, friends, Norma Jim. and Ron. You've what? got some lovely friends. Uh, they are. And really, we're friends, quite right? intelligent. You mustn't judge us by these jokes and the music that Bill Gates makes. Just play, must they? No, you no, know, don't judge us by anything altogether. that happens on this show. And Jackie's different altogether, too. I am. Norma, and I love you so. Gorgeous song for you. It's a wonder Deborah didn't pick Johnny Farnham to sing for you. She's got every picture of Johnny Farmer, Farnham ever printed, I think. And I love you so. Well, she picked a beautiful song for you, Norma. To you and Ron, happy day. And it's very, very nice. And Lily Harvey, too, from Warrandyte. Happy birthday, my loves. What this party needs is some real dancing music. And here it is. A Meyer exclusive. Only $3.98 for Happy Jack and the Barroom Boys with 50 minutes of non-stop party music. 22 of the good old good ones. And the good new good ones. Foot tappers like Tie Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree. Repaz Band. Yes, sir, that's my baby. Marina. Tell me. And more. Foxtrots, quick steps, cha cha chas, Charleston, even a gypsy tap. Real music for real dancing. 50 non stop minutes of swing along, sing along party music. Only $3.98 for the Happy Jack Record. Exclusive to Meyer City and Suburban Stores. Phone your nearest Meyer store for immediate delivery. The deal. Most new car dealers offer a similar deal to uh, to Brian's on the new Fords. No, they don't. I've got all that mixed up. Most new car dealers offer a similar deal on new Fords, but not Brian Wood Ford of Fern Tree Gully. Good. It's just that I can't get used to not having Jackie ruining the ad. The difference is Brian Wood's owner protection plan. At Brian Wood Ford, they go a little further to ensure every new Ford owner is fully satisfied. You check him out. Brian Wood Ford of Fern Tree Gully. He got the deals. Brian Wood Ford of Burwood Highway, Fern Tree Gully. Here's a request coming right up now. Oh, listen to that. Mrs. Tobin of East Coburg. This is a call to Kath Tobin because she's 21 again. She's an undertaker. No, she isn't. Kath, wrong Tobin. Ah, the Rangers walls for Kath Tobin, 21 again, from husband De Dennis and mum, mum and law and all the relations and Kitty, and they're all getting together on Tuesday for a spot of tea, eh? Oh, it'll be, be more than tea, I feel, for Kath. Mum, I've cut myself, Mummy. Oh, dear, not again. Come on, let's see. We'll soon get that cleaned up. This'll do the trick. What's that? You're putting none at Mum? Will it sting? No, dear, it won't sting. And it's called Savlon. Why do we use Savlon? Oh, <laughs> Savlon, dear. Because it helps kill all those nasty germs fast. Savlon antiseptic liquid helps kill germs fast. Savlon antiseptic liquid. At your chemist. Have you tried Luna Living? Guests home furnishing world, renowned for quality furniture at realistic prices, have the Lunar Living Baron Suite exclusively. Baron is a magnificent three-piece lounge group with a genuine teak frame, upholstered in luxurious striped boucle, and priced at only $499.
Why not call into any of Guest's 13 city suburban or Geelong stores and try the exclusive Lunar Living? It's out of this world. And it's available on immediate delivery. When a girl sees a bargain, she knows that it's a bargain. She's a Portman's girl. And here's what the Portman's girls are saying. They've got absolutely everything, you know? If you want your fashion dollar to go just a little farther, be a Portman's girl. Oh, well, we've gone to plenty of places, and I think they've got some beautiful things, and they're in a reasonable price. I think they're just fantastic. Be a Portman's girl. Portman's, city stores and all major shopping centres. Jimmy Hannon on the Greater 3 UZ 930. Well, Marjorie Martirano would like her request for a daughter, Wendy Fraser, and please play her a record. She's in the Children's Hospital for a checkup today at 10 a.m. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, uh, Wendy. Hope we've caught you in time. I'll send that letter to Des, by the way. These are all for Desi. Uh, Margie Rose of Flemington would like a request for uh, uh, cheerio to her husband, Don, son, Michael, daughters, Debbie and Kelly. Uh, also from Karam. Gee, a lot of requests. Glenda Redwood would like a request, and uh, we'll say thank you. Glenda for your lovely letter. We're sending them on to Des. Ruth Byron of East Melbourne would like a request to and a lucky charm and a and a record from Des. There we are. Say hi to us all. Hello Ruth Byron down there at East Mel uh, Melbourne. Don Caster, Leanne Knight would like a request and she said I really enjoyed the Des O'Connor show. Could I hear a record of his? I, you certainly can Leanne. And Eileen Greenway would like a request to and a good luck charm and she's just back from a month at Palm Beach Gold Coast. Good luck to you my love. Here Here's your favourite boy, Des O'Connor, and as soon as we get all the dyes done and uh, the medals printed, we'll send you out your uh, lucky charms. Thanks very much for the letters. I'll send them to Des. Jealous heart, you jealous heart. That's a very popular song of Des's called Jealous Heart. I heard them all yelling for that one during one of the performances that I saw. And Jack, don't forget to send those letters to uh, Des and take their names and addresses because you're sending them out Lucky Charms, aren't yes. you? There we are. It'll change your luck. I want to get one of those good Lucky to Charms worse. as well for myself. What? What? What's your birthstone then? Go on. Since I came here to Grindstone, since okay. I worked here. Oh, you've never, never had it so of, good. Oh. You've never had it so good. Thank you, Mr. Church. The man from Muir. So, the old telly set's not what it used to be, eh? Picture week, sound not so hot. Then girls, trade your oldie in on a fantastic new Philips TV from Muir's. Philips really know how to build a TV. All sizes just right for family viewing. And now, here's the great news. Muir's are discounting Philips TVs to just 165 or easy terms if you like. Muir's, Glenroy, Preston, Coburg, Nidri and Footscray. Muir's, the mightiest in the north. Mortine is fast, powerful, deadly. Mortine kills flies dead. Fight back against the flies, blowflies and mosquitoes. Mortine's concentrated formulation is completely safe near children and food, but lethal on flies. Make sure you protect your children with Mortine or Mortine mentholated. Don't be soft on flies. Oh, Mrs. Sparkle. Yes, Mr. Sheen. It's so simple for your furniture to gleam. I just give a little spray, you wipe over right away. It's the quickest waxing trick I've ever seen. Oh, Mr. Sheen. Oh, Mr. Sheen. Everything around my house is sparkling clean. All your furniture looks fine with a lustrous mirror shine. I wax and polish as I dust with Mr. Sheen. For an instant mirror sheen to the furniture you clean, wax and polish as you dust with Mr. Sheen. Well, Nadine of Thornton would like a request for a mother. Nola Creed and Mrs. Jean Smith, her friend. Their birthdays are on Sunday. Happy birthday, Nola and Jean. And hi to Pat Gilmore. Her birthday's on the 27th. Good day, Pat. How are you? Love from Nadine. Uh, Yvonne Ellis of Heathcote would like a request for Mrs. Matten. That's her mum, too. Happy birthday to you, Mrs. Matten. Lots of love from Yvonne and the family. Uh, Jill Whittingslow would like a request. She's from Northcote for her mother, Marble Whittingslow. Uh, Mabel, Mabel, Marble, Mabel Whittingslow of Broadford. Happy birthday, Mabel, from Jill and Bobby, Bradley and Peter, Bev, Graham, Tracy, Craig and Paul, and Heather DePito would like a request for a mum, Giuseppa DePito. Hello, my husband, Giuseppa, uh, Lou and Benny, uh, Dorothy, 
Lee and Gloria and Via, Carol, Heather, Albert, Lou and Elio, and the grandchildren Tommy, Anna, Maria, Enrico, Diana, Joey, John, Paul, Matthew, Joseph, Justin, Adrian and Andrew. She'll live forever. Giuseppe DePito, isn't it? Tell them their lucky stones and what number they're going to be and all that. I've you done know. all that. Oh, you know. Yeah, I've done all the that. The Jimmy Hannon Mystic Show. Yes, I've done that. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. You know, all the things you tell them about the stars. Mm -hmm. Eye of Newt and Toe of Frog. Oh. Wool of Bat and Tongue of Dog. Oh, how, you, you, how now, you secret black and midnight hags? Open locks, whoever knocks, locks, knocks. You see, this is a you ridiculous are. show. You yes, know. you should have come in. You know, out all these mad things. Of your, this number is a lot of rubbish, you know. Go away, evil one. <laughs> That's Jamie, Jamie Redfern, and the song about all the mamas. And here is a Mama. special report from John Ford, who yes. is lying in bed ill at the moment. Yes. He's been run over, and both his legs are broken. Oh, damn. And he has just r rung up to say there is no truth in the rumour that uh, Jamie Redfern is going to marry Evie Hayes. <laughs> I read where a young girl of 18 is going to marry a man of 95. Get away. Yeah. Well, personally, you can't blame the man. I mean, after all, perfume smells better than liniment, doesn't it? <laughs> It's 10 o'clock. This is Neil Watson for 3 UZ BBN Network News. The United Nations Secretary... Okay, we'll fade out there. Uh, we just heard... Um, we heard uh, uh, the happy chappy, Mr. <laughs> Jimmy Hannon, and, of course, Jackie Clancy was with him. That was recorded off 3 UZ in 1973, I think. Yeah, so um, slick radio from the uh, from the 70s and uh, acknowledging the uh, career of Jimmy Hannon. I think he retired at 50. I think it was a very sensible thing to do. Probably made enough money to uh, not to have to worry too much. And uh, he went and lived on a farm in northern New South Wales, I think. I think that's the story. So uh, he knew when to get out when he was on top of his game. And yeah, that was uh, it's a uh, great pace to it, that radio. The rhythm is amazing. Right. So, Radio Rhythm, we'll move on to... Oh, yeah. This next one is something of a mystery. I'm not going to tell you who's performing. And I want... Uh, this is something... And I'll only give the game away at the very end of this test transmission. So, so you're not allowed to be entertained. But you are able to ponder who this artist might be. And at the very end, I will give the game away. So have a listen to a superlative artist, a great player, who, well, no, I'm not going to say anything else. I'm going to let the music speak for itself, and we'll see if you can come to the right conclusion. VK3SL, testing.
There was that mystery performer, and that's in place of the pianola because I haven't uh, been organised enough to get a pianola roll ready for tonight. So yeah, mystery performer. We'll give the we'll give the answer at the very end, and you can ponder who it might be. I'll give you a clue. It was recorded at um, it was recorded at Channel Nine in nineteen. No, I won't say the year. It was recorded at Channel Nine in the sixties. There we go. I'll say in the sixties at Channel Nine special appearance. And shall I give another clue? Mm. No, I won't. Not for the moment. I'll give another clue a bit later, maybe. I'll, I'll, I'll mention that. All right, so what's next? Okay, yeah, I'm going to try and do something a bit interesting here. Uh, on my travels, I, I'm always looking for... Re- well, I'm sort of trying not to look for records, but sometimes they sort of jump out at you. And, I, yeah, <laughs> there's an instance of this <laughs> with some Westminster... Recordings, some recordings on the Westminster label and the LPs recorded in the late forties. To the uh, the label ran until about nineteen sixty three. Then was taken over by Deutsche Grammophon. But the records, it's a boutique label, and from Middle Europe. Um, it was founded by I found some biographical details here. Westminster Records, and it's loading, and it says uh, yeah by um, businessman uh, James Grayson and the conductor Henry Schwaboda. Now Henry Schwaboda is the conductor of this next recording. The thing is about Westminster Records, uh, being a boutique label, they were sold especially for or the, uh, they were geared towards the uh, audiophile market in the very early days of audiophiles and um, so they're exceptionally well recorded and their secret uh, as they say it was to have one microphone placed in front of the orchestra just one mic and not using multi-tracking which they thought smeared the sound and they used to produce these records with a something like a 10 page booklet which mostly display, uh, described the recording technique. Now, unfortunately, the booklet was missing with the two records, the uh, Westminster records that I picked up um, uh, this week. Uh, so I don't have that information, but I would love to read it, and I'd like to source that because it would be interesting to read how they did this. Anyhow, these are quite early. They're mono recordings made on um, very heavy vinyl, and in, I think the first, the one I'm going to play now is from 1949. Uh, now, I have to do a little bit of repatching as I speak, so I've got a, um, yeah, unfortunately the sound card, and I need a separate laptop actually for this purpose, and one of the schools was going to throw out some laptops and they promised me one, and I, um, and it came to the end of the day and then they'd already given them away to somebody else, but never the mind, I will find one, and I'm just sort of sorting out things on the screen here as I go, and... Sound cards plugged in. The SP10 is geared up and ready. I queued it up before. Now, what we're going to listen to is a um, just a very short work, actually, just a short work of um, Carl Philip Emanuel Bach. This is one of Bach's sons, and uh, one of how many kids that Bach had? 21 kids. I think about half of them um, lived to adulthood, and a few of them became great composers. And probably the most famous of them all was Carl Philip Emanuel Bach. Anyhow, on this Westminster record, we have um, the um, Henry Schwo- uh, Sh- um, Swoboda, a Czech artist, conductor. He uh, owned the label, um, or co-owned the label. And there's a huge amount of information on the back, but nothing about the recording process. Um, I won't bore you with stuff about the works themselves, but there was a, um, just after the war, there was a bit of an interest in um, in the non-mainstream composers, uh, for, um, classical composers, and the authentic movement was starting to take off. This is certainly does not represent the authentic movement at all. It's very um, full-blooded romantic interpretation, which is what I love, and it's quite 
remarkable. Um, we hear a symphonia in C major by C.P. C. Bach. The work had only been discovered a short time before this recording was made, and particularly vital playing. It's with the Vienna Orchestra, and um, I think for contractual reasons they don't say exactly what orchestra, but I think it's probably the Vienna Phil or musicians from the Vienna Phil, and uh, with uh, Schw um, Schwabada conducting. Enough preamble. I think we're almost ready to go, so we'll try this, and hopefully... Hopefully it will work. So um, we'll have a listen to just one movement from the symphonia, but it's it's wonderful music and um, and very written at the same time as Mozart. C. P. Uh, e. Bach was um, more or less a contemporary of Mozart. He died a couple of years before Mozart, and was certainly admired by uh, by his contemporaries. Okay, uh, so let's we'll start and we'll have a listen. This is VK3SL testing on 160 metres, 2 metres and also streaming on the Broadwave streaming service. <laughs>
Okay, I was getting a bit carried away with that, listening to um, listening to the music of C.P. Bach. Now, that's uh, that music is very much in the aesthetic of the Sturm und Drang. That's the uh, reaction to the Enlightenment in the uh, in the sort of pre sort of pre romantic music, I suppose, proto romantic music. And Sturm und Drang, of course, means storm and drive. So we're sort of preempting the romantic movement with that music. So yes, Bach's sons at the helm. And uh, yeah, it's you certainly hear that sort of raw energy, and um, and particularly in the first movement, great drama. So, and I'm really impressed with that record. I think it's a um, the, that label, the Westminster label. They're beautifully recorded. It may have sounded a little bit uh, compre- over compressed on air, but uh, in here, it's it's a beautiful, clean sound. So um, I'm uh, yeah, gonna look out for more of them. They're um, there's not many of them reproduced on YouTube or anywhere else, so that's the type of LP that i am got my eyes open for. And, uh, yeah, that, I think that's recorded as early as 49, 50. It's quite early, that one. And they continued through to about 1963. And, as I mentioned, they came with a booklet explaining the t- recording technique. I'm sure the audio files would have sat there salivating over all every morsel of information. Uh, yeah, anyhow, so well, there'll be more. In fact, there's another disc there of a um, post uh, of a Brahms or a spurious Brahms piano trio, and which is never performed anymore. It's an early work of Brahms, and he actually destroyed all of his music, but uh, his early music. And he was he was such a perfectionist, and all his drafts and anything that wasn't uh, a final product was put into the stove. Um, but this one's reputed to have been uh, copied by somebody and it sort of surfaced in the uh, 1930s and then recorded and uh, it's quite an interesting I had to listen to it uh, briefly this afternoon or bits of it and uh, I'll save that one up for another missions but it's very early Brahms or it's supposed to be so another story there but uh, again on another Westminster disc and also found some Nancy Weir on spotlights as well so uh, Yep, some good material to draw from for these missions. Now, I'm going to have to disconnect that sound card and turn off the one thing on the computer and turn on another thing. And I think I'm almost ready to go with the next offering. Yes. Now, next thing is um, another point of interest for me has been the music of Rebecca Clark. Now, Rebecca Clark was a viola player and a uh, composer English viola player and composer in the early days of the 20th century. She lived until 93 and actually died in the 19, early 70s, I think, in New York. But uh, she had quite a distinguished career earlier on, and she wrote a lot of music in the um, up until the 1920s, quite a bit of music, mostly chamber music. But uh, she won some very important international competitions, and... Uh, well, I've been listening to a fair bit of her music and I absolutely love it. It's in that sort of Frank Bridge, Vaughan Williams, um, Elgarian English tradition. Um, but i um, not sure if I can really put... Uh, <laughs> no, I could put Frank Bridge and, and uh, Vaughan Williams on the same page, but perhaps not Benjamin Britten. But yeah, anyhow, <laughs> Rebecca Clark. Um, so I thought I'd just sort of queue up a couple of her compositions to have a listen to, see what people think. Um, might sort of develop her, this story a bit more because it's there's a lot of um, I've noticed that there have been a lot of recent uploads and recent publications from her archive. So this is one called a grotesque for viola and cello. So a work for viola and cello, singularly, um, no other accompaniment instruments, and it's called a grotesque. Now I don't know why it's called grotesque. It certainly doesn't sound grotesque, but it's quite it's beautifully composed, and um, Music certainly worth uh, being rediscovered. So let's have a listen to the music of Rebecca Clark. Now, for obvious reasons, she didn't. She struggled terribly being a woman in Britain at that time as a composer. It would have been terribly difficult to for her to to um, gain notoriety. And it's sort of like a lot of these things. It's it's well down downstream that uh, that they become discovered. But she's no exception to that. But yeah, see what you think. Grotesque for Viola and Cello by Rebecca Kayak. I'm VK3SL testing.
finish very abruptly. <laughs> that was the grotesque for viola and cello by Rebecca Clark. I've got another one of hers here. Another one's fairly short. It's a duo concertat for um, uh, what is it? Another chamber music piece. It's a dumka duo concertat for what instrument? I think it's violin, cello, and with piano accompaniment. I think. Um, here we go. It's a violin, viola, and piano, actually. And um, so another another work of Rebecca Clark's, another beautiful thing. And uh, so we'll put this one on next, VK3SL. <laughs>
That was Rebecca Clark's uh, duo concertant um, for viola and violin and uh, and piano. A uh, one of her chamber works, which has recently been uh, republished, and uh, she only published a very small um, number of works in her lifetime. But we're seeing a bit of a resurgence of interest in Rebecca Clark in recent times. So it's nice to jump on board. And I love her music. I think it's amazing. I think it's really rich and in in its harmonic language and its textual use and uh, it celebrates the the wonderful lyrical qualities of the uh, particular viola she a lot of her music is is centered around the viola and um yeah anyhow it's nice to uh, to hear that now that was a dunker now dunker traditionally is a um uh, sort of an epic ballad um epic yeah sort of uh ballad with uh, a melancholy flavour to it, I suppose. And uh, you see it a lot in Slavic music, but the uh, dumka she used as a musical form with the themes in that duo contratant. So it was good to hear that. It's a recent discovery. It's nice to... This is one of the things that I've liked most about doing these... Um, uh, doing these test transmissions is it's got me listening to music and it's got me finding new things and... Uh, and correlating and sort of uh, actively listening, not just sort of uh, letting um, 
uh, hearing snippets, listening to whole works. So I've listened to both of those pieces quite a few times this last couple of weeks while on our travels and a number of others as well, which I'll include. A lot of Vaughan Williams' music I've been listening to while travelling. It's great music to have in the car, and the family seem to be okay with it, and um, lovely expansive qualities which sort of work well when you're looking at the uh, the mountains or the uh, Monero Plains. <laughs> yeah, anyhow, something very different now. This is... Um, I don't know if I'm going to hold everyone's indulgence with this. It's quite short, but it's difficult. <laughs> Another piece I've listened to it is one I actually analysed at uni a long time ago. It's uh, Penderecki's Threnody for the Victims of Hiroshima. We had a bit of a Japanese theme at the start. And I'm sort of picking this up in a rather apocalyptic sort of way. But, um, yeah, the Threnody is a work Penderecki wrote in 61. It's a modernistic work. It's aleatoric in construction. And it's, uh, yeah, it's challenging. It's challenging. It's intense. It doesn't deal with sort of traditional musical forms in any sense of the word. But um, what does it say here about it? Um, applies the sonoristic technique which tends to focus on specific characteristics and qualities of timbre, texture and articulation, dynamics and motion. Yeah, what well does, it sort of just is these thick sinewy textures, but it's screaming. It's a screaming work. It's full of pain and anguish and of course the subject is uh, is one of, of the of one of the worst most terrible um, events in humanity really. So he commentates on this and um, in a very direct way. So, look, I figure that we've sort of listened to quite a few contemporary-style electronic pieces earlier on when I did these missions, and this one here is involves instrumentalists. It's a large-string orchestra. And it's got some moments where the, um, the fail alarm will probably come on because it's got some moments where the music almost disappears entirely but comes back. But it only goes for eight minutes, so I ask for your indulgence. See what you think. See if you can put up with it. It might be a challenge, but I want to, I want to um, personally listen to a lot more contemporary music this year, and here and there I'll be throwing little snippets into these uh, tests if people feel inclined to keep uh, not tune out. Anyhow, after that, I've got something special. I've got an answer to our quiz. <laughs> oh, here's another clue, by the way. The quiz relates to something I played much earlier in the program. There we go. You heard that wonderful piano performance well that actually relates to something i played earlier so there we go maybe you can go back through the playlist and and see if we can work it out anyhow you'll hear the answer to that at the very end there's one short piece after the threnody and then we'll yeah it'll tie it all together so okay we're listening to fred um uh, it's frederick penderecki isn't it or no it's christoph christoph penderecki yes he's still alive he's in his late 80s or something um but uh, christoph Penderecki's Threnody for the Victims of Hiroshima. And uh, hold your horses, folks. It's quite a ride. VK3SL testing. <laughs>
Yeah, we heard the uh, Threnody for the Victims of Hiroshima by Christoph Penderecki. It's written on line 61 and written for 52 string instruments. And uh, it's quite an interesting score and has some aleatoric elements in it. But um, there's a lot of information in the score, actually. Yeah, as well, about, uh, about inflection and dynamics and, and uh, articulation and so on. But, um, yeah, it's certainly a revolutionary work and very powerful work, I think. Yeah, I listened to quite a bit to Penderecki's music and also um, Schoenberg's, uh, some, quite a bit of Schoenberg and also Stockhausen. Some of Stockhausen's early music is really quite accessible. And um, even his later stuff, some of it's just absolutely bizarre. Other... Um, I listened to his helicopter quartet, <laughs> which is an interesting work, where four members of a string quartet with a click track go up in helicopters and they mix the sounds of the four helicopters with the sounds of their instruments and then the people in the concert hall below are listening on loudspeakers while the choppers are flying above with the live performers and the choppers. And there's a version of it on um, YouTube. Just look up Stockhausen um, Helicopter Quartet. Maybe I'll play that one one time. It's quite fun. Um, but yeah, it is a very different take on music. I might lis lose all. My, I might lose my one listener. But uh, yeah, I I I got to challenge myself. Otherwise, I just um, listen to the same styles all the time. I do love uh, the post-romantic music, particularly, or mo romantic music, and uh, and of course the class classical and baroque. Um, very much, but I also feel a need to expand. So, yeah, that's all a part of the the big tapestry, I suppose. All right, that brings us to our last item on the program, and the performer here is the performer of the piano earlier on. Now, I won't say the name, but I think it'll be very evident, and I will post-announce this one, and I will uh, have a listen on two metres shortly afterwards. So we'll finish off with... A very special offering, a most beautiful, beautiful performance. I think this is amazing, but I'm sure you will as well. Quite different to what we've just heard. This is VK3SL, my first missions for 2019. And thank you if you've hung around for the long haul. 
We'll see how we go next week. VK3SL, handballing it to someone special. So, it's a song that was first sung in Ireland by a man who had three sons. The eldest two have both been killed in the war and now his third son is leaving home. It's a song will mean, which will mean a great deal to anyone who has experienced the heartache of being parted from loved ones. It's the story of Danny Boy. When he comes and all Okay, we heard Judith Durham uh, singing Danny Boy uh, with an introduction that was recorded in 1968. In fact, the same year as the piano recording we heard earlier. She played Nola earlier on and with a bit of the Greek concerto. Uh, Judith Durham actually uh, did her AMSA on the piano and um, played as a, well, limited as a concert pianist. So, yes, an extraordinary background, amazing musician. A voice that mesmerizes me 
and I love her recordings of The Seekers, as well as her solo recordings. If she could have been another Melba, if she'd had the right sort of training, but probably best that she didn't do that, because she had supreme success with what she chose to do. But her voice is one of the most natural voices I've ever heard, and and Melba similarly has a very clear um, pitch centre to, to every note. There's an evenness to Judas Durham's voice, which is just so extraordinary. All right, enough raving and ranting. I will switch off to meters in a moment and have a quick listen in case there's anybody there on uh, Channel D. I'm presuming everything's going to work, and I might need to give me a moment to sort things. So VK3SL shortly standing by on two meters uh, on um, crossband 160 and two meters. Just hang in there. <laughs> 